Hey, what's up all you YouTubers? Uh, so I am headed into Nashville right now to meet a fellow content creator slash YouTuber slash marketing extraordinaire named Ed Oyama. Um, I actually met him on the Video Ranking Academy Facebook page. And he is one awesome dude, has some awesome content. He has come into Nashville for a conference and I found out that he was here and hit him up and we are meeting for dinner and maybe a little podcast time. So yeah, that's going to be awesome. Welcome to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I'm Lionel in Toronto, Canada. Toronto, Ontario, Canada to be exact. However, my partner is on a remote location, so I'll let him introduce himself and a special guest. Go for it. Well, as always, I am Robert, and I'm actually coming live from Nashville, uh, from the beautiful Millennium Maxwell Hotel, which apparently is actually based off the Maxwell Coffee brand. Yeah, Maxwell Did not know House. that. Maxwell House. So, uh, Didn't my know that. awesome guest with me tonight is Ed Oyama. He is a entrepreneur, content creator, marketing extraordinaire that I met through Video Ranking Academy. Um, and he's just an awesome dude. We've had a great time uh, doing some chit chat, had some dinner. And uh, so I appreciate you coming on and kind of being a part of this. No, so. it's an honor to be on the show. Super hyped to yeah. be here. Let's go. Welcome aboard. Welcome, welcome. Good to, good to meet you, man. So one thing I just kind of wanted you to tell the viewers, I think it's important a lot of people don't understand the whole side of marketing, content creation, and what really spawned your whole dive back into YouTube because I know part of your story is your channel was dormant and then you decided yeah. to spawn it back up so just briefly like what actually caused you to want to get back into the whole YouTube scene oh that's a cool question so for me by the way what's up I'm Ed Oyama I'm from Los Angeles but I came into Robert's part of the world a little town called Nashville actually pretty big town pretty cool and he came and picked me up from a thing. I'm here for a conference, took me to my hotel. We got some dinner, got to catch up. It was great. And YouTube, man, um, I took a long time off because I just couldn't figure it out for what my business is about. I'm a, and actually I didn't even figure out what my business was, honestly, at that point. <laughs> I started off as a website designer. My background is I worked in a Christian nonprofit for about 15 years, maybe more, 17 wow. actually. It was a long time, basically, after I graduated from college. Um, I was helping out with college Bible studies. I ended up overseas directing an English camp. I started off as an English teacher, then I became a, a teacher team leader and a director of English teachers, then I became a director of an English camp living in this country called Kyrgyzstan, which is just west of China, a couple countries north of Pakistan, uh, the more famous stands, right? <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I learned a lot about marketing because the funniest thing is we figured out how to be the best English camp in the country. I honestly believe we were. And even if you would say we weren't and you were in that country, you would admit that we're in the top three for sure, probably top two. But I think we really were the most fun, the most affordably priced, and the one that actually brought in legit teachers from English-speaking countries. And we spoke with no accent, so we were great. And oh, the funniest thing, people don't just uh, walk up to your door and want to sign up for classes even if you're the number one in your country it's fine we got a market we wow. got to put ourselves out there yeah big facts right and that was my hard education in marketing but i i learned and i, I didn't even call it marketing back then i called it getting students to come to our classes <laughs> that's what i called it back in the day because otherwise Right, our our volunteers from home because they we'd send they'd send these great college volunteers from UCLA USC every summer. Well, they wouldn't have any kids to teach if I didn't do the work of getting the kids into the class, getting them registered, letting them find out about the program and all that. I started a YouTube channel though, and I didn't know really what skills from my past life were actually that useful. I would say I had a hunch but I didn't really have it all figured out. So the problems were this. I didn't know what to say 
and I didn't know how to deliver it on video, and that's kind of a big problem on YouTube. <laughs> so I was getting like five views, yeah. one view, no views, and it was, you know, it's it's kind of a stab in the heart if you know what I mean. Very you, put, you put your work into yeah. it, you're doing the work, and you don't get nothing back in return. So I figured, you know what, Instagram is popping off right now. I'm gonna do a 30-day challenge and see what happens with this, I don't know, this random Instagram account that I found, someone recommended me, I really liked it. And I was getting 10,000 views. So I'm like, why YouTube? Who cares? Like, uh, it's searchable, but no one finds me anyway. So let me take a long time and hang out on Instagram. Well, lo and behold, Instagram algorithm has changed in 2022 it was super nice if you knew how to make a vertical video because they're trying to compete with TikTok, so you got crazy reach and what happened is they slowly dialed that down until i'm putting a lot of work into a video on instagram like half an hour an hour into a 10 second 30 <laughs> second thing right and then i realized <laughs> wait i know what i'm talking about now it's been two years it's 2024 I've got clients now. It's like I'm accepted in the Chamber of Commerce and stuff. They, the people in the community love the workshops that I'm doing. I've learned because I learned how to run a good workshop the hard way. But I figured it out. And then it's like, wait, what if I delivered it a different way? Because there's this vlogger. You guys watch vlogs? I watch vlogs from time to time. I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've started more. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I was a super big fan of Casey Neistat in 2016. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. he was one of the first. He, he was one of the first ones I was watching, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially for us, like, millennial, Gen X. Like, yo, he's an OG. Yeah. I don't know what the kids watch these days. I'm watching the kid vloggers, like the Gen Zs and the Gen Alphas. I'm like, whoo, yeah. you <laughs> Drink less coffee, folks. Man, <laughs> what you talking about, Well, This kind of thing. Oh, oh. But um, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I watch Casey, but I think that's not for me. It's so complicated. But then I heard about this new vlogger called Sam Sulik because one of my clients was in CrossFit, and he's a fitness vlogger. And bro just turns on his camera in his car, totally not aesthetic. Clips his mic to his hat. <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah. Streams for 30 minutes, barely uh, any edit, super rambly, and he hits a million subs. I don't, I got, I got to say, I, I, I on, one, on the one hand, I don't understand it, but on the other hand, I kind of do. Uh, I, 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 I fancy myself a photographer, not, not a professional photographer, but a photographer nonetheless. Uh, and I've had a lot of very expensive equipment in the past. I mean, this is my, this is my camera now. Okay. <laughs> but that said, that said, uh, I, of course, watched a lot of photographers on YouTube and other platforms, but mainly YouTube. I'm sh I'm shouting because of the people behind you. <laughs> As if I can't hear myself, but it's weird. Uh, instinct. Uh, anyways, uh, one of the one of the guys and it turns out he was from Toronto and I didn't even know that. Uh, but he basically just took his camera on a on his hand or in a selfie stick and walked around vlogging about photography without taking a single freaking picture and he had about three hundred thousand subscribers at the time <laughs> yeah i know eh? <laughs> i i think it's a reactionary movement at least this is what i've heard and i believe it it's like we've seen so many polished well-produced videos and you know, YouTube, it's not network TV, and I think it's not cable TV. It's individual creators, and when individual None creators, I feel like when we're leaning in, right, right, right. I mean, it's cool. And don't get me wrong; it's awesome. Like, I love your guys' studio setups. We're here at the Maxwell House. We got crowd noise. We got, we got. What's going on? People drinking Maxwell House coffee up in here. It's loud at nine a.m. Eight thirty. Being our highest rated video ever. Probably. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. But yeah. then it's just like, I realized vlogging, maybe I could hack it. Because I was like, I'm a big Casey fan. It, it, but the new style of vlogging in 2024, and I watched some video from Think Media, their podcast about it. This guy, Benji, Benji, who's a big vlogger and been very popular, him and his wife, both power couple in the vlog world. 
Um, He's they, a cook. He does food. Yeah, it's a food vlog, and he vlogs his Costco work. runs. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Oh, I'm man. like, how'd you do that? But he's more watchable to me than his wife. It's Judy because it's Judy's life. Definitely, yeah. she's got it going on. But you know, it's like mom lifestyle vlogs, which mm. is like fun. But That's yeah, I can watch a little bit. I can't watch Sam Sulek. He talks about bicep curls and eating enough protein, which I get the protein <laughs> part. I do not need to have a bicep as big as my yeah. Corolla. That's kind of Sam's thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro is ripped I, out of his mind, I, professional you know, body. I, I, might have, I might have cared when I was 35. Uh, I'm not 35 anymore. So I'm just like, as long as I can still get out of bed and go to somewhere. <laughs> as long as my back doesn't give out in the middle of the day while I pick up a toddler, I am so stoked. That is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as the dad bod doesn't get as many jokes or comments from my wife, yeah. I'm pretty happy. I have a question. Have you seen any of those vlogs, uh, channels, uh, where they're like families that have uh, uh, some form of talent or, or they just do their vlogs together as a family? I don't mean the ones that seem fakish, you know, uh, that maybe are real, but they're overdone. Oh, that's interesting. But I mean, like... Um, the New Zealand family, I can't remember the name of the channel for some reason. I watch it all the time. Uh, it's just, it's the mother, the father, the the uh, older daughter and younger son. And they were just in love with America. So they would talk about everything American that they could. And they, people would send them uh, food and gifts and stuff. And, and sometimes label them specifically for the mom, the dad, or the brother or the wow. sister. And they, I got to move to New Zealand and do this <laughs> vlog too. That sounds yeah, they, great. They've gotten so popular that between their Patreon and whatever money they could get from YouTube when they didn't get demonetized, and that's another story wow. altogether, they made enough money to make a trip to Europe and then go back to America. And then six months later, go to America on an RV trip for two months. And travel to like I don't know how many states. They've been back for three and a half months, and they still haven't only put out five videos from the trip yet. That's how much Whoa. content that they were able to make just from that you trip. Got it. Yeah. You got to send me this vlog. That sounds like a good time. Yeah, you know what I yeah, think is true. interesting? It's it's creeping into other kinds of videos though. Yeah. Like I watched this dude Fresh Baked. Um, I don't know if you heard of Fresh Baked. Fresh Baked? No, I haven't heard of that one. If you're a Disney person, especially a Disney Parks person, especially Disneyland Anaheim person, <laughs> Fresh Baked is a local <laughs> legend. But he is one of okay. the most popular. Like, it's it's a niche of its own. Disneyland streaming slash dis like. I watch Disneyland live streams occasionally when I wish I could go to the park, get away. Yeah. But I don't have the money or the time. Yeah. <laughs> but I can just actually watch what's going on at the park tonight. Yeah. Oh, check it out. They're in Star Wars land. Oh, there's a fireworks show. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get to see that show because my kids all wanted to sleep. What's the show like now? Oh, fire. And then Fresh Baked, what he does, I think he's got an annual pass and he must live next to the park or really close or something <laughs> because bro's there every day. Wow. He's there every day. I'm like, when Damn. I retire, that's living the dream for me because I'm a Disney stan. So I'm like, that's wow. cool. But he just like, guess what, guys? Tiana's adventure is one day closer to opening. That's literally like a vlog of his. And you yeah. can see now yeah, the yeah, test yeah. logs going down the hill. I'm like, yes. I'm so like weirded out, but fascinated and kind of like, wait, what happens next? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, let me show you the line cue. I'm like, oh, the lines are an experience at Disneyland because they design it and stuff. So I'm like, show me the line. Yeah. I can't believe I watch this stuff, but I do. And it's it's like he's carrying around the same camera that I do, the Osmo 3. Oh, yeah. And it takes beautiful video, wide yeah, angle. Yeah. It's super clear, super gorgeous. And it's, I don't know, it's it's not like being at Disneyland, but it's kind of like being at Disneyland. It's the funniest thing in the yeah. world. Well, that's I, what it, this kind of does, though. It allows us um, to live vicariously through others true. in a lot that's of ways, you know, um, because I watch things like that, too. It's like, oh, my gosh, I, I wish I could travel there. And then when I do travel there, it's like, oh, my gosh, I remember watching this in the video, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. You bet yeah. next time I go to Disneyland, I'm going to look for Fresh Baked, see if I can find yeah, the guy. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, it's you. If I see a dude, older guy with an Osmo, I'm like, are you Fresh Baked? <laughs> and you know, the next time I go to Canada's Wonderland, I'll be thinking, why isn't this Disneyland? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, you got a Wonderland in Canada? That's cool. Hey, Wonderland. No, it's Canada's Wonderland. It's, uh, it's, it's actually the third, second or third biggest park 
in North America. Uh, Get out of town. Pretty much, obviously not including Disney World in Florida. Um, nothing compares to that. That's a whole city. Uh, but, but yeah, it's it's got the second most amount of roller coasters, if I'm not mistaken, in, in all, all over the world, I think. Oh, wow. wow. So, that's big. Yeah. That's yeah. really big. It's, it's pretty massive. It, it dwarfs the size of the original Disneyland is tiny by comparison. But. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet deal. Well, this is why I, I pushed him to get his photography channel started. And he, oh. he he uh, he procrastinated for a long time, so finally he did it. Sweet. And uh, so I still don't got much going on it. Though. I thought there's just too yeah. many things that have happened recently that have kind of put it on the back burner. And at, oh, like, okay. And, and aside from motivation, which obviously a little kick here and there is necessary, is. Robert can tell you. Um, <laughs> uh, there's also other things that are preventing me from actually being able to find it, uh, that, uh, what I need to do. So it, it's a little bit more difficult. However, uh, being able to talk to somebody like yourself who understands how to do these things and, and what it takes to be successful at it, uh, it's a bit of a kick in the pants. And I hope it not only helps me, but anybody else watching if they're interested yes. in, in getting something going because you don't have to sit on your butt and just wait. You got to get up and do it, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And, 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 you know, as I was telling you during dinner that your vlog transition is what inspired my other channel, which obviously oh, yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. about, you know, exactly. time-wise, not being able to post much to it, but to transition it to a vlog in my car right. as opposed to the right. talking head and it actually helped grow much faster than it would have as a talking head so um i definitely think that raw real hey this is just me i'm just hey talking to you let's just have a conversation um is not the new youtube but people are craving for realism yes and yes. i know myself even before i started creating content i didn't ever you know, I wasn't attracted to those super high polished, high produced videos. Yeah. I wanted to see Ed just talk about a device, right? I want to see Lionel mm -hmm. just talk about a camera or, you right, know, I just wanted to right, see the real right. people talking about real things and real stuff and real situations and not all this hyper produced stuff that I'm thinking like, okay, you got $50,000 <clears> worth of equipment. Right. And you're telling me to go do this, but you know I can't do that because I don't have fifty thousand dollars of equipment. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's a really neat gorilla videography mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. to it right now because yo, the camera on uh, this is an iPhone 14. It's not the newest, but heck, if I pulled out my iPhone X, which is now kind of old, or my iPhone 6, right? <laughs> That's still a better camera. Like that would have been. I don't know, a $10,000 camera yeah. 10 years prior to the iPhone 6, right? Like, I had a one megapixel something. I thought it was the coolest thing in 19, well, 2001, maybe. Not even 1999. <laughs> I couldn't afford no digital camera in 1999, right? But 2003, I think I got my first digital camera. My iPhone 6 wow. is, like, only, like, 100 times better than that. And yeah. it's an iPhone 6, right? Yeah. And, and the Gen A kids, they're bringing that back as a whole aesthetic now. They'll go on eBay and buy one megapixel, three megapixel cameras. <laughs> and they'll shoot videos or they'll go to Goodwill and buy a camcorder, shoot a video, do a really crappy transfer to digital. And it's a whole vibe on its own. So it's just funny how everyone has the toolkit now on their smartphone. You can shoot, edit, and distribute all on I, their phone. I can't believe, as you mentioned that, I, I'm going to share something with you um, that's completely related to what you're talking about. Because remember where I said, I, as a photographer, now I have to use my phone. Um, the last two days, because it's fall and it's the first time in about seven years in Toronto that we've actually had a season of leaves, leaves Wait, what? changing colors. No! They would just go yellow and fall off within three days. Uh, or yeah. in, in, in the case of last year, they fell off while they were still green. They, it, we did nothing for like seven years. This so year, weird. we're getting red and yellow and orange and nice. turquoise. No, I'm kidding. Not tur <laughs> turquoise leaves. You got some legit so, colors, though. I, 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 <laughs> I, went, I went out uh, yesterday, uh, if I could get this done properly. 
Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, I'm going to share this. Uh, do I still have to push a button? I still have to push a button. Show on stream. Show on stream. Okay. Yo. There we go. I Ooh. took this photo with my Pixel 9 Pro XL. And Dude. the only processing done, because I did take the raw file and put it into Lightroom, it took me less than 12 seconds to edit this photo to give it these exact colors. The, the, this is technically the most perfect photo I've ever shot in my life. And I've shot with thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment. Wow. It, when I say that, I mean, I don't have a great eye for this type of photography. But as I was sitting there on the beach feeling all peaceful because it's 25 degrees in late October in Canada. Uh, Beautiful. Celsius. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 8 or 79 degrees Fahrenheit, something along that. Or, yeah, somewhere along there. So that's very warm for late October in Canada, anywhere, even Toronto. But oh, yeah. The thing about this is, let me just go over to here. This is the original. I'm sorry, that's the original photo. Okay. And that's what I looked at. I thought that looks pretty nice. But you, when it's like this, you can see how the natural fall off behind this rock and how it's not like that, right? Because that's the size of the sensor in the phone. Uh, and then when I edit it, it's it just the colors pop. And that's gorgeous. I, absolutely love it uh let me let me oh, say, well, actually you know what what the heck i'm going to show you one more um do it do it do it i love it oh <gasps> look uh, at that there's it uh yeah a squirrel in action uh, wait Even a minute your squirrels are exotic in canada we don't have dark squirrels in california <laughs> this is where the phone, just... yeah <laughs> this is a, this is where the phone and it's shooting 50 megapixels and in the, on the Pixel phone, when you shoot the 50 megapixels. 50 megapixels. What is yes, this thing does. shoot? This is an iPhone. What is and it? it? Well, that's an it's older one, to be yeah, fair. It's, it's not 12. 50. It's 12, yeah. maybe 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but when you shoot in 50 megapixel mode, there is a little bit of a quick delay, even in bright sunlight, because it's doing a different type of processing and it's doing it incredibly fast. But it's wow. still like click, click. So to catch a squirrel actually in motion, none of his paws are touching the ground at that point. It's hard to tell because of the leaves. But he oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So he was actually up in the air. And just to, to get this, uh, this is the fit. Yeah, I think this is the one I want to show you. That That is me taking a picture of myself. That's natural portrait mode, no natural blur. Natural. Well, you get a natural blur on the pixel. This yeah. is not software. Yeah. Yeah, and this is not. This is not. A, if I do that with the zoom camera, this is what happens with the five time zoom camera. Holding that it myself. Cool. Well, oh, ironically, wow. it was funny because when we were at dinner, um, I had our waitress take a picture of yeah. us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she actually did a fantastic job. I'll share the pictures with you later. Um, and I'm like, wow, that's dope. You did the portrait. Yeah. She's like, yeah. She's like, um, is that a pixel? And see, what she asked me, I thought, oh, Sean, I, I thought, oh, Lionel would be so proud of you right now. <laughs> and I told said, me. I said, no, me it's, a, it's a Samsung. Samsung. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I would hate on it, too. Is that That's not a good play on customer support. <laughs> but it, it, it's the, the, the picture on my Samsung looks dope. You'll see when, when you get it. But she automatically yeah. related that to the pixel because she knows how good of a camera that's these incredible. phones have now, you know? Yeah, yeah it's I'm funny just... that you don't hear as much of that for Samsung phones, but they do take fantastic pictures. Well, Ed, what you don't know is his streaming camera yeah. is a Pixel 8 Pro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. That's incredible. It is. It is. And, and you know what? I'll tell you, this actually does do a better job, but it's okay. this is my phone. I don't want this one over there i want it in my hand <laughs> i hear that i hear that I yeah hear that's that. a pixel 8 pro that's uh yeah, doing that's a, a yeah okay so so honest confession i've been a android user most of my life but i only converted yeah. to apple around iphone 6 ish and it was a secondhand iphone 6 i just like that the thing didn't crash because i was buying these cheap right chinese um reputable it was the xiaomi brand which apparently has xiaomi, no xiaomi standing at all Xiaomi makes good phones, right? Oh, so yeah. I bought well, some Xiaomi's while I was in do. China. 
But like, yeah. yeah, they would last about two years each, and I was kind of sad about that. And then yeah. I bought an iPhone 6, and it had been my bro's phone for like five years or something. <laughs> yeah. And it lasted me another two just fine. So I was like, how about that? And I was all jazzed about the camera, because I Apple, they're the hype machine, right? Like, they're really yeah. good at they the do marketing. Marketing, yeah. They're and the genius. Yeah. They're really, they're be- ads are beautiful. Somehow it just feels very, I don't know, it's punchy compared to what Google. Google doesn't know how to make an ad. Yeah. I don't think they know how to make no, it. <laughs> they made a, don't get me wrong. They made a few good ones. But sure, they sure, sure. Stick to it, and they don't. They're not consistent. Oh yeah, and I it's watched cool. Google's event, their live event, where they revealed all their cool stuff. It was cool, but their Hello, guy was. It, I, but, I don't know if it was Sudeep doing it, but like you look at Tim Cook, who is not as good at this as Steve Jobs, but Tim crushes it compared to the Google guys. I'm like, yeah. Oh, oh man, yeah, but you guys no, are making great that. stuff at Google. I, I mean, I use everything else. I got my MacBook, but I'm using Chrome, man. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah. I'm using right. Gmail. I don't. I refuse to go the Apple browser and the yeah. Apple email. Like, yeah. I, I'm a man of mixed emotions about the pro- platforms. Yeah. Yeah. This but that camera is fire. Yeah. Well, it's good. Yeah. Uh, this is how good Apple is. Uh, how good Apple is at, at marketing. They can lie to you. Directly into the camera, <laughs> exaggerate, and you will still buy the product even after the media comes out and says, Apple exaggerated this, and it doesn't work like that. Right. But they tell you about their whole Claude Bayer system with their oh, garbage. And with the Pixel, uh, Pixel, I mean, sorry, the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And then, uh, oh, our, 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 uh, our five time zoom lens and it's Quad Bayer, blah, blah. It, it, it's, it's absolute. BS in the way it works. It's oh, that is so crazy. Inferior to both Pixel and Samsung, as well as uh, uh, Xiaomi, the newest Xiaomi phones. Uh, the wow. top. End but wow. Wow. Their marketing oh, suggests otherwise. So. It is. I mean, it goes back to like my experience running an English camp. As weird as that is, but you can be the best in the world. But if you don't market it the right way, nobody yeah. thinks of you that way. Right. Right? That's correct. So, like, Apple is clearly, like, 50 Dang. megapixels, right? Like, uh, Windows has always had them beat on the hardware side as far as, like, pure stats. <laughs> right? But then as, like... That's not but, true anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You got a point there. You yeah. got a point. We're both playing devil advocates yeah. for our other side now. This is fun. <laughs> the, fact, the fact of the matter is, is that is that Apple does actually make excellent hardware. Whether it's the best or not, uh, may be provable or it may be conjecture. But best for certain things, for sure. Yeah, and to some people it is, and that's fine. Um, but the thing is, is, is that since they went to the M chips that's where it changed because interesting they, oh, for those who don't yeah. know they basically it, it's it's they're using the same manufacturing from whatever they have it's not the same thing but it's basically the same stuff that you see in your phones in your top end phones oh. so my phones are powerful than my laptop well yeah because these things actually have far better chips than this laptop i have right here right now uh but the newest windows laptops are also now using uh snapdragon chips so now we're talking about you're not going to be ahead much longer, Apple, because what that happens, just watch what happens when Google decides to put a Tensor G7 in, in, a, in a tablet, mm. which by the way, two nanometer, two nanometer process, uh, you know, based on uh, TS, T, what's it, TSMC, which would be the same thing that manufactures Apple's M, M2 chips or M3 or whatever they are now. So... Their marketing cool. is fantastic. Google sucks, and you're absolutely dead on about that. <laughs> well, I'm curious because I haven't had an Android tablet for ages. I mean, the closest thing I had to that was a nice Chromebook back like five years ago, yeah. <laughs> which basically was Android, it felt like to me at that well, point. Well, it's 100%. Well, it's yeah. based off Chromium, but they turned Chromium into an actual operating system. It was really nice, so, actually. Yeah. I, was, yeah, I, yeah, I liked that version of Chromebook because I could run oh, all my favorite Android true. apps on it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was true at the time, but, but the modern uh, Android tablet is, is just Android. Yeah. So oh, okay. Just, Interesting. Just after, uh, I think Android 12 and up, it's just if you if you bought an Android tablet with new, it would just be Android. But they're always optimized for oh. larger screens now. 
right? Well, you so know, know the thing that was interesting to me about the iPad the first ten, time I got my hands on one, and it doesn't help that all my tablets were crappy. I was using Amazon Kindles oh, and yeah. like Garbage. Galaxy tabs that were kind of older, not the newest yeah. generation. I was just stunned yeah. by how liquid and smooth it felt, and it's probably a combination of the screen and the processor yeah. being pretty cool. But I was like, oh, this is so smooth and responsive. And when I use the pen on it, it's super responsive, which was never my experience with any pen oh, on right. anything, yeah. be it yeah. a Windows device or a tablet up to that point in my life. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, just that combination gave me like this shock and awe that made me stand Apple suddenly. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm an Apple guy now. <laughs> but like, are the, are the Android tablets really like basically the same at this point? Well, the best Android tablet you're going to get is going to still be a Samsung. Okay. But the current version Samsung, I, I take that back. The newest tablet from Google, which actually has replaced their Google Hub Max, <laughs> so you can attach it to a base. Whoa. And you can remove it from the base. Wow. That's a pretty nice tablet. Um, that's just brand new, though. It just came out last year. So with the exception yeah. of that... Samsung still has the top tablet as far as Android. That's hundred percent true. Uh, actually, I, if I might further that, Samsung is the only one that I would purchase other than the Google one. I wouldn't oh. buy another manufacturer tablet for because they don't give you the hardware. You, you'll end up with like some weird uh, Kirin processor or something. I did. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and the Amazon tablets are trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great for reading books and watching videos, and uh, I don't know what else. It's, it's not even. Well, their, their yeah, Kindle yeah. reader is like great because it's just black and white. It's Actually, like, I really like the Kindle. It's 100% like oh, a book, one. basically in digital. Yeah, I love yeah. them. I, I still have one, and it, it's like six years old now. It was probably a year old when I bought it. Uh, I mean, it was brand new, but you know what I mean, the previous year's version. And I, I still, you know, it still works perfectly fine. I I wouldn't know, actually, because I haven't taken it out of the drawer in two years, but <laughs> <laughs> I should probably read sometimes. But <laughs> but I have tested it, actually. I've taken it out, and I've, it just still works. I can still it's log really into the Amazon account. It's a really reading experience, though. It is. Like, yeah. I, it's far better. When I got my hands on one, again, after years away from the Kindle, the OG Kindle or the black and white Kindles, I was like, I like this so much more than reading on my iPad. Yeah. As much as I love oh, my God. iPad. I'm so distracted whenever I read on my yeah. iPad. There's a billion but yeah, you can. on that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if and, I was smart, I'd delete honestly, everything off it, but I don't want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that extra brightness that isn't necessary as well True. like and, and what i like my mind doesn't have a backlight i actually have to have oh, a light like on that. i love uh, it because it's it feels more like i'm reading i always liked reading over the no, small true. light beside me like the nightstand which is what those are made for for reading in bed and, I, <laughs> that is and, true. and, and the only time i ever like to read ever was, would be like on a day where i'm i'm not working i get up in the morning i have a cup of coffee i make some toast and i read for an hour an hour right. and a half <laughs> Or oh, a like Saturday that. afternoon, I've done some chores, uh, I don't feel like taking a nap, and I'm old, so I might want to take a nap. Uh, but <laughs> I feel you like on the naps. I feel like I, 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 maybe I decide I'm not tired, so I'll, I'll read for an hour or two instead. But this is not something I've done recently, and I hate that because, again, everything I feel like I want to read, but if I read, I'm going to miss something else. And I need to rethink how I think, you know? <laughs> oh, that's a bar right there. We got to rethink everything. Yeah. That that's really true, honestly. Yeah, that's the that's, tech has rewired the way we think. That's that's deep, Lyle. It has. Yeah. It has. Uh, for better or for it, worse, like there's no. better and there's also worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, compromises. Sure. I've I've had a lot of things go better because of technology. Uh, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for technology. Uh, I'd be sending a guy on a horse with a letter, and you guys would talk to him, <laughs> and you send the guy back. And then we, once we did that 50 times, we'd then take the amalgamation of all those letters and we'd send them off to some guy in another horse who would take to it a to publisher. a guy in the press. <laughs> Look, we, we are at least at the carrier pigeon, okay? We don't have to do horse, we do Six carrier pigeon. Later, Six months later, the story would finally hit the Boston Tribune. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, Except that um, they probably wouldn't take us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think they had standards. <laughs> we can self-publish this bad boy now, and we do it by that's video. Right, that's but right. I wouldn't even oh, met Robert God. if it wasn't for the tech. And I heard you guys met on what Google we have Plus. We press then. <laughs> yes, Yo. we did. Yes, Google Plus. We go wild. way back. We go way back. 
I wish did Google Plus had it? made it. I did a little bit of Google Plus, and I was reading. Who was it? Who's that guy from Apple that loved Google Plus? Guy Kawasaki. Oh yeah, yeah, guy yeah. Guy Kawasaki yeah. was yes. a huge G Plus yes. evangelist, yes. just yes. like he's a Canva yes. evangelist yes. now. He but, was um, in my circle too. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. so cool. He, he wrote yeah. so convincingly about it. I felt like it couldn't fail, and then it failed. <laughs> well, no, I don't. See, that's the thing, though. I don't think it failed. I think they failed. To oh. continue to oh, improve it. Is that what happened? I, that's they, me. I mean, they, you guys no, actually they, used it a lot. Yeah, here's the thing. Google Google did one of their classic Google things. They decided no. to shuffle the cabinet. Just just, just oh, like wow. a you know, Canadian uh, uh, government. And they shuffled the cabinet. And, and oh, so, when they did that... Uh, these guys said, well, uh, we need to do this over here. And then some jackass immediately said, well, this is how it should be done. And we need to change that. And we need to do this. Now, the Google Photos oh, thing uh... was a brilliant idea. The problem was that was the first nail in the coffin. And a lot of people, I remember some people actually saying when Google they first photos. added the photos to, because uh, it used to just be called Photos, and it was mm-hmm. part of Google+. Plus. And they said this is going to get taken out of. And people were calling them out on that before they even announced that that's what they were going to do. And it was the first nail in the coffin that people recognized as they're not going to keep this going. Why would they put a photo app inside this thing that you can use anywhere Mm. if they're not planning on ripping it out? And if they're planning on ripping it out, that means they're not planning on updating this thing much longer. Sure enough, a year and a half later, they'll announce the cancellation of of, uh, Google+. And it was what? it was terrible. If they just left it alone and updated it, it wouldn't it wouldn't touch Facebook. But I was yeah. glad it didn't touch Facebook because I didn't right. want every random. We didn't want the Facebook. Dong. I mean, it was very yeah. different than Facebook. I, it was refreshing that it wasn't well, Facebook. The, the thing about the Google Plus is that you could you could really, you know, create your own type of environment like we created yeah. a tech environment like that's how oh, we met that's how i got cool. part of that big android barbecue i was telling you oh about. yeah yeah you were telling yeah, me it's because yeah. i i basically you know created my own how i wanted things to be you had your own circles to communicate with. yeah right you had the, circles the, yeah, yeah 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 the best part about it is you can have all kinds of circles you can have more than one tech circle i had a yeah. tech circle that was specifically uh uh for a uh, certain type like everyone that loved uh google and samsung uh, another tech circle that was only about computers and one that was generally for everybody and, wow. and and then i had a circle that had nothing to do with whether it was technology or anything else if they were the people i talked to most often who i found that i could engage with all the time uh there uh and why do i can't remember his name again this is the second week in a row it's gonna bring him up and i <laughs> you know i'm talking about with the website they did the techeris yeah techeris yeah uh <laughs> anyways him uh, robert uh there was a few other people that i uh, well actually several people that i had in that in my main circle and we talked uh a lot more often so as as this started to die down there were wow. several of us, including this fruit fly here, that wanted to get, <laughs> that wanted to uh, remain in contact when this thing died. So we all tried to find ways to talk to each other. In the case of Robert and a few others, it was it was Facebook, and so we stayed in contact. Uh, the other people decided to go in the direction of MeWe, which, in my opinion, is the worst big fat failure Me-wee. of all time. I don't. Um, even, I didn't even hear about that one. Me-wee. Oh yeah, yeah, it's okay. You don't it's, want to. It's, <laughs> you don't want okay. to. <laughs> Wow, no, it's not good. Let's just put it it's this way: it still exists, and everyone that shouldn't be on the internet is on it. Oh, it's well, one of those. Okay. It, turned, it turned into one of those. Yeah, oh, yeah. So four ten. Yeah, yes, yeah. It's very insane. Uh, <laughs> Gee, wow, yeah. bummer. Yeah. But yeah <laughs> so I mean, you know, the thing is, like we were talking though, that you know, social media and and now YouTube is turning out to be the same way in that. It's cultivating a community that you can build your own type of community. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you're in my community. He's in my community. You know, these think media people are in the community. Right. And I can, you know, hone in on that. Right. Yeah. And so you build. And that's what YouTube is all about. That's what, you know, Sean Cannell talks about all the time is community. Community. And, you know, like what, you know, 
my viewers are part of my community, whether I interact with them or not. Yeah. But they're part of the community. Absolutely. So, you know, yeah. it's it's a whole different kind of sphere of engagement. And it just, uh, I don't know. I, I dig it. I think it's cool. No, it's really cool. It really is. I feel like it's funny because when I used to talk about, I don't know, good marketing practices, how to use social media, that sort of thing. I, I thought of myself as social media or video or marketing for beginners because I realized that was an angle that doesn't get enough creative stuff about. There's like all your Hermoses yeah. and yeah. then there's like your super pro people making great content. But where is it for like the total beginner who is who I'm meeting at the Chamber of Commerce every Wednesday? Right. Like yeah. they're like, wait, what's the difference between Facebook and Instagram? And to find someone that won't judge them but give them an honest answer. Oh, I'm glad you asked. So Facebook's kinda like a big community bulletin board of sorts or family barbecue vibes wise but yeah 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 and you just give little simple explanations and suddenly they feel like they get yeah. it and i'm like oh and i can do that but then i didn't realize i could bring so much of my personality on it and rather than shooting myself in the foot with my real personality like which is what i thought it would be it was really what i thought it would be is the weirdest thing so i just yeah. bring it i deliver the information in a very calm and normal what i thought is normal kind of way and it gets nobody to care. My first video is like, hi, I'm Robert. I'm going to interview, I'm going to review this camera today. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I hear that completely. The, the funny thing that, that for my channel is there were two videos that were breakout videos in the summer because I had like 35 subscribers for the longest time. But I was excited about the vlog idea because I'm like, at least it's fun for me again. I don't care as much if it's fun for anyone else. But I know for a very small subset of people that know me in real life from the Chamber of Commerce, this will be their jam. This will be helpful for them. It's not cool. If I'm only a local channel, I've learned from Instagram, I don't need a lot of followers to actually get a client. I need, I could get a client with one follower if I chose the right person, if they follow me, right? right? So yep. that's cool. So I was like pretty chill with my 38 subs, 40 subs. I'm, this is fine. Wow, I got 100 views with 40 subs. That's actually really cool. That's 2x my subs. I don't know how that happened, except mm -hmm. the algorithm showed me a little favor. Good. And then I made a video about the Osmo 3, but I put more of me into it, mm -hmm. a little bit more. And that worked, like, right? That's cool. It worked, <laughs> yeah. And then I shot yeah. one with Deadpool, which Robert really liked. And I think that's how we became friends a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I went to watch Deadpool and Wolverine, and I just sort of vlogged it. I don't know what I'm doing at this point, too. I didn't shoot it right. I'm uh, like somebody send me the link to that video. I want to see it. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then the funny thing was, like, I wasn't sure what to do anymore because I'm like, wow, that one video got 2K views. And now I'm overthinking every move. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. How do I get that ever again? And I'm overthinking it to the point where I'm just pissed off at myself. And I just made a very yelly kind of video and honestly was yelling at myself. Like, are you too busy to make content? Oh, heck yes, you are. There's a billion reasons why you're too busy, man. You're a dad. You got a job. You got this. You're the driver. You got this. People are telling you to do stuff. You probably should be sleeping more. I and yeah, I you're, you're way too today. busy. Yeah, 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 I'm like, yeah you are yeah. way too busy for this crap unless you make it so simple that you can't. Yeah. And, and, and I'm in the back going, preach it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because I just came with my genuine self rage that day. <laughs> I was yelling at myself, <laughs> uh, but I'm yelling at the Osmo. And then I'm like, cool. Well, that was weird, but I'm, I, I wonder. Very therapeutic. What, but I don't really care what my people think at this point. I just need to upload something because it's been a little while. I upload and suddenly it just takes off like a rock, and I'm like, wait, what the heck? And everyone's like, exactly, preacher brother. Like, yo, I feel you. Genuine. I feel that. And I'm like, wait, yeah. what? It was <laughs> funny. And I was like, that was the most genuine. Like, that's the way I talk to my friends. And some and to my good yeah, clients, yeah. clients that really get me, and I get them. That's the way I talk to them. And if it's like a, a more new client, I'm kind of like more professional. See now you have um, what 1100, 1200, 1300. How many subs? Oh, you gosh, have? it was like 1340 this morning. Those are friends now. Yeah, and then they're it's not like subs. They're see? friends. It's, yeah, yeah, because they like, they look at you and they go, oh my gosh, that, I can relate. That makes sense to me. Yeah. So much, and that's right. why I told you, like when when I see when I get because I I hit your bell icon. True, 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 true. Right when yeah. I see your videos come out, I'm like, oh, I gotta go watch this video I from Ed because this dude's hilarious, and I. A few moments later. All right, well, he's back now. 
Yeah, so, right. sorry. Uh, so the hotel wife might kick us off momentarily. Hotel punted us. Hey, yeah. you know, look, overcome. There we go. There, <laughs> we, go. there we did it. Adapt did it. and overcome. <laughs> yeah. Overcome and yeah. adapt. Yeah, but actually, this is probably a good point to segue off because I, I know okay, Ed is yeah. probably tired. He's had a long day of travel. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much oh, this was for so your much time. Fun. It's yeah. really been awesome. Amazing. And it's it's great to see a different perspective and, and hear a different way of how you, you know, like, you know, interact with your your people. <laughs> so I appreciate speech. that. You know, it's very cool. Man. It's very cool. Man. Oh, no, right. no, we're still here. We're still here. Yeah, yeah, you're still here. I just put you up on the screen because oh, yeah. oh, he, hello. Got you there. he just he just so. wanted to, us maximize so we can <laughs> he can see. But yeah, so uh, listen, everybody, I am going to tag Ed's channel. Why don't you go ahead and tell him what it is? Absolutely, yo, come on over to Super Simple Marketing, especially if you're a small business owner, because I help small business owners get business from their channels, and I help people who have channels build businesses off those channels. I run a free Monday. Um, I run a free Monday small group too. By the way, it's called the Small Business Growth Group. It is totally free. It runs twice a week, and you can find the link on my channel or go to edoyama.com/ggg/growthgroup. But yeah. Yep, yeah. and I'll link it in the description. Uh, so make sure you go check it out. Support him. Um, he's just a fun guy to watch, and you guys, you know, anybody who watches this stuff is going to get a lot of value out of the content. Even if it's just motivation and you don't even care about marketing, it's motivating, and that's that's super important. Yeah, it's, it may have motivated me to something too. So <laughs> let's go. I mean, that's what I'm about. You I love that. to also not just go check out his stuff, but like, subscribe, <laughs> yes. bell icon. <laughs> legit, legit. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> Content creation is wealth creation. Go make some stuff. Let's <laughs> go. Amen, brother. I'm, I'm the only one here who doesn't have a good goodbye. So I'll come up with something one day. But well, you're supposed, to, you're you're supposed to say goodbye in a different language, remember? Well, you just like you got a different wasted language. it on me. You just wasted it on me. I was in the middle of trying it. No, it doesn't work anymore. Can you say it but in Canadian? <laughs> well, I'm going to go get a tool for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited that you have a real fall. The last time I was in Toronto was in the fall for my friend's wedding at the end of October. Oh, yeah. It was years ago. But oh. it was beautiful and the leaves were falling. We're in Markham and it's yeah. amazing. And I'm like, wait, you haven't had one of those? I thought it was always that way. I'm sorry, Man. there's leaves in Markham? I thought it was all just concrete. I, <laughs> maybe. maybe. It was probably that one street that had some trees I'm on just it. Kidding. I love it there. I've you been know what there they got up there? They got good Asian food in Markham. <laughs> That's what I found in Marco. Of course they do. It's it, it's almost exclusively an Asian neighborhood. The entire city. I go I there kind of to away. go to the mall. The mall there, which is almost all, well, it's all Asian uh, marketplace, uh, and a lot of it, the the the, uh, the eating center, or what do we call it, the eating area in there. Authentic Chinese food in some of the places. It's fantastic. Oh my gosh, the food was amazing. I thought we. Yeah. I mean, we got a lot of Chinese up in my part of L.A., but Marco. I was like not expecting that at all in Canada. I, yeah. I don't know anything about Canada as an American, right? Like have, I know that you have, have healthcare more, and you have, have like here. three Chinatowns here, <laughs> and you we and you got like, Kim's Convenience, which is my favorite show. Yeah. <laughs> we have like three. That, yeah, but in all fairness, Kim is not Chinese. <laughs> Oh man, it's Korean. Oh man, but, that's true. <laughs> we, have like three, we have like three Chinatowns here. Only one officially, but there's the north part of Toronto. There's downtown Toronto, the area in downtown Toronto is Chinatown officially, and then there's almost all of Markham, which is which is Chinese. <laughs> so, I don't think you're wrong. Having been to Markham, I think I believe you. <laughs> I love it there. It's the closest thing to living in China for me. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to officially say my goodbye. I'll start this week by saying it's wonderful having you on. Auf Wiedersehen. And on behalf of myself and Mr. Oyama, yo, yo. peace out. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.